Hello, I'm Robert, the developer of Ultimate Epic Battle Simulator. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get a character from Unity into Ultimate Epic Battle Simulator. First, let's start by saving a new scene. You can name it whatever you want. Next, we need to import the UEBS character setup, which is included in the zip file in the UEBS workshop tools. Next, in the UEBS character setup folder, drag out the setup prefab into your scene. This prefab contains everything you need to set up your character for Ultimate Epic Battle Simulator. At this point, you should have your rigged character in your project ready to go. Whether it's from the asset store or made from scratch, your character should be properly rigged with Unity's animation systems. Let's bring your rigged character into the scene. Drag your character from your project folder into the setup prefab in the hierarchy, which will make it the child of the setup object. My bandit doesn't have a weapon, so I'll give him an axe which I found for free on the asset store. I'll line up the axe with his hand to simulate him holding it. Next, I'll drag the axe into his hand bone so that it's attached to his hand. Let's assign the mod and character name. The mod name is the name of the exported file. The unit name is the name the character will have in-game. Don't worry about the category name, this isn't currently used. Next, you need to match the height and width of the bounding box to your character. The default size of the bounding box is about the average size of a man, so keep that in mind. Next, we need to assign the animation component of your rigged character. Ultimate Epic Battle Simulator supports both a mechanum humanoid and legacy animation. Keep in mind that legacy is only supported when you're using your own custom animations. Now we move on to the meshes in your character. First, we're going to assign all of our skinned meshes. This character has four skinned meshes, so I'll type in the number four on the list and press enter. So that you don't confuse skinned meshes with solid meshes, this axe here has a component attached called Mesh Renderer, which means it's a solid mesh, whereas the body of this character has a skinned Mesh Renderer attached to him. All the meshes of your character should be located as children in the character object. Let's assign them. Let's look into distant LODs. Distant LODs are a highly optimized version of the character model. The distant LOD merges all the models and renders them as one material, and if provided, a low poly version of the model, which is very important if you don't want your character to slow the frame rate of the game. Here is what the low poly version of this character looks like. This was created with a third party plugin called Mesh Simplifier. There are many plugins on the asset store available for making low poly LODs. However, if a model is created from scratch, a modeler will often create LODs during the process of making that character. Now I'm going to assign my low poly or low resolution meshes. Now I'm going to talk about the Use Distant LOD color. This is meant for characters which are using multiple materials. The Distant LOD joins all objects together and renders them as one, using the material of the first model on the list to render them all. This means that objects using other materials that are not in the first model may look very strange, but Distant LOD color can change the color of that object while still only rendering with one material. What you will notice I'm doing now is assigning the average color of the given object to each that is not using the same material as the first object in the list. The easiest way to assign a color is by sampling a piece of the model with Unity's lighting disabled. Make sure that you do not enable distant LOD color for the first object in the list or any other models using the same material as that first object. Once you are finished with your mesh settings, the rest of the settings are fairly straightforward, but may require some trial and error, which I will not cover in this tutorial. 
Let's get your character in the game. To export, click the small gear on the top of the inspector and click Export All. If you want your mod to include multiple characters, this function will export all characters that are rigged in this current scene into a single package which is far better than making multiple packages for a single mod. Now we're ready for testing. The export should place the mod right in the project folder above the assets folder. Copy your now exported mod and place it in the Streaming Assets Character Mods folder in the Data folder of Ultimate Epic Battle Simulator, as follows. Let's see our character in the game. It's time to upload to Workshop. All mods require an icon for browsing. Your icon should be square and should not be higher than 512 by 512. The file must be named Icon, no capitals. You'll notice that I just created a folder. A content folder must be created to hold the exported character as well as the icon. Let's open the UEBS Steam Manager in the tools included. This tool is responsible for uploading and updating all of your mods. To get started, UEBS Manager requires the content folder location. Simply copy and paste the content folder's location from Explorer. Click Create Mod and set your title and description. All that's left to do is to hit the Upload button. When it completes, please allow several minutes for it to publish. Your content is now being shared with the world. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.